There was once a man who planted a vineyard, rented it out to tenants, and then left home for a long time. When the time came to gather the grapes, he sent a slave to the tenants to receive from them his share of the harvest. But the tenants beat the slave and sent him back without a thing. So he sent another slave. But the tenants beat him too, treated him shamefully and sent him back without a thing. Then he sent a third slave. But the tenants wounded him too and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said to himself, what shall I do? I'll send my own dear son. Surely they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him coming, they said to one another, this is the owner's son. Let's kill him and his property will be ours. Tell us more, Lord. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants? He will come and kill those men and give the vineyard over to other tenants. What then does this scripture mean? The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. Everyone who falls on that stone will be cut to pieces. And if that stone falls on someone, it will crush him to dust. Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then something amazing happened to two of the disciples. They excitedly came back to the others. The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. We didn't recognize him. Not on the road. But when he broke bread, then we knew him. At Emmaus, how strange he should go there. Peace be with you. Why are you troubled? Why are these doubts coming up in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Feel me and you will know. For a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see I have. These are the very things I spoke to you about while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and the writings of the Prophets and the Psalms had to come true. This is what is written. The Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And in his name, the message of repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I myself will send you the one my Father has promised. But you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. In the Holy Scriptures, God declared the Messiah would come to be the Savior of the world. The life of Jesus gives evidence that he is indeed the one the prophets spoke about. Isaiah prophesied that the virgin will conceive a child and will give birth to a son. Centuries later, 
the birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Holy Scriptures declared that the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. This means that Jesus was to be called the Son of God in a spiritual sense. We see this in how he lived his life. He healed people from disease, forgave their sins, turned them back to God, and promised them a place in God's eternal kingdom. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin in their place, and then rose again, conquering death. Jesus said, no one can take my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. The life of Jesus not only fulfilled the writings of the prophets, but also confirmed the truth of God's holy word. The prophets declared, the word of the Lord is flawless. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. Jesus himself said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness, but when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, he chose to go his own way, and his actions separated him from the Creator. The Holy Scriptures declare that all have sinned, and the payment for sin is death. This means a spiritual death, eternal separation from God. But just as God provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son, so he sent Jesus the Messiah to die in our place. His life, death, and resurrection restored the relationship between God and all those who put their trust in him. Now those who follow Jesus not only have their sins forgiven, but are saved from God's eternal judgment. They are assured of paradise and will live with him forever. It is this life and freedom from the guilt and power of sin that Jesus offers each person today. This does not mean following a religion, but choosing to have faith in Jesus, who says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. This means turning to God and trusting Jesus to come into our lives, to forgive our sins, and to make us what he wants us to be. It is not enough to intellectually agree with his claims, nor to have an emotional experience. We receive him by grace through faith as an act of the will. When people are ready to become followers of Jesus the Messiah, they may speak to him in a simple prayer. Perhaps you are ready now to open your life to God. If so, you may join in the following prayer to him silently in your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess and repent of my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. As I become one of your followers. Amen. Jesus said about his followers, My sheep recognize my voice. I know them, and they follow me. In order to experience the abundant life which Jesus promised, his followers talk to God each day in prayer and read or listen to his word. They tell others about him and meet regularly with those who love and follow him. Remember his wonderful promise. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Lo, 
I am with you always, even to the end of the world.